Welcome to another fantastic episode of Real Talk with Real Fit Pros. It's your favorite friendly neighborhood fitness ninja, Mark Zalmanoff here, flying solo today. And I got a hell of a message for you. But first of all, um, if you are listening to this on release day, we have our Fit Pro Collective live event September 15th and 16th. And let me tell you, if you've never put on a live event, it's a lot of damn work. <laughs> it costs a lot of money. And we are super excited. Definitely a learning experience uh, for all of us involved. But we have a fantastic lineup of speakers. We got a Super Bowl champ. We got an IFBB pro. We got a vice president and ISSA. We got your favorite friendly neighborhood fitness ninja. We got Jonathan Loudermilk, the king of getting what you're worth. Got a lot of great people and we are going to put on a hell of a show. So we are excited about that. Um, if you don't know, I live in Texas and it's been summer for like the last 18 months. It feels like we finally are cooling off here a little bit. So that's fantastic. So much to be grateful for. I am grateful for you listening to this thing. And what I'm going to talk about today is this, this so-called recession that people seem to be talking about in social media, on the news. If you watch that, by the way, life hack, don't watch the news. That'll, that'll give you a lot of peace of mind, free up some brain space. My wife and I recently got a membership at a big box gym. Now I own a gym, but she's super pregnant. And as I said, it's been summer here forever. And it, my gym doesn't have heat or AC. It just got to a point where it's just too damn hot for her to work out in there. We walk into this gym and we go to the treadmill section to get on there and you look up on the TV and all they have is news on and it's all just a bunch of shit. <laughs> like, seriously, no, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to hear it. It's all crap to get you riled up, scared, divided, whatever you want to call it, but turn it off. Don't. Don't do it. Listen, the only reason that I even pay attention to the news is so I feel somewhat educated what's going on in the world and to make memes. That's pretty much the extent of it. Um, but they keep talking about a recession. And most of you know that the cost of goods has gone up. You know, gas is up and milk is up and eggs are up, or whatever. Like, I live in Frisco, Texas, where rent is too damn high, but it's just the reality of what it is. And what we're starting to see, unfortunately, is some of our fellow fit pros operating with fear and scarcity and worried about where their clients are going to come from. If the pipeline seems to not be as full as it used to, people are not committing to starting a new exercise program. People are not committing to investing in their health and fitness the way they were even just a few months ago. And I, I want to address some of this because I think perspective is key here and understanding the value that we provide in the marketplace is huge. Now, preface this with the fact that I've been in the coaching business. I've been in fitness for 20 years now. So I've seen a lot. You know, my career started long time ago, which means I witnessed the stock market crash of 2008. I was already in gym ownership at the time. It really did a number on the clientele that we had because at the time, I was running a gym where we had a lot of one-on-one -on -one personal training and that market started to go away. Even before that, we started to sense it anyway because of the introduction of CrossFit and a couple of other group training models that were catching fire. So we had already begun to shift, but lost a lot of clients during that time. And it really allowed me to retool the offerings that I had into what I actually still offer to this day, which is a small group training model. Anyway, um, but you know, I, I weathered that storm and came out on the other side of it. You know, we have multiple presidents The you know, the changing of presidents always affects the economy a little bit because people get worried about what the next guy is going to do and how they're going to affect things. But one thing that I've learned over the years is I don't control any of that shit. 
There ain't a damn thing that I can do about any of it. I don't control who the president is. I don't control the stock market. I don't control the economy. I don't control natural disasters. I don't control the weather. I don't control what my neighbor says or does. I don't control the political parties. I control none of that. All I can control is what's between my ears and the way that I respond to what the world is giving me. And if you are clear on your mission in this world and you're clear on what you can do for other human beings by helping them live happier, healthier lives, then there should be nothing that deters you from continuing to take bold action in order to grow your business and help more people. So let me give you a, a, a few things to think about. Number one, this country is grossly overweight and obese. If you're in the U.S., we're still 70% overweight or obese. We have been for, I don't know, a couple of decades now. It's not changing, which means people still need our help. And if you go out and talk to people face to face, like most people want to talk about health and fitness. They will engage in a conversation. Most of the time it's to tell you all the reasons that they're not doing shit, whatever. But, <laughs> but if you can have the conversation with people, you'll realize that people still want to change. Now, many of them are willing to change. They're not willing to do what it takes to get in a place of good health and fitness, but they want to, they have a desire to, and maybe you're the catalyst. Maybe you're the one that actually gets through to them. Maybe it's your message and your tone and your personality and your presence that draws them in enough that they finally go, damn it, you're right. All right, what do I do? Jonathan always talks about having impactful conversations. That's our goal. That's our mission is to have impactful conversations with people. And if you have enough of them, I promise you, people will raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested. Tell me more. When we get into the money aspect of it, let me tell you why there's not a recession. And, and I know there's definitions of it. And, and by the terms of the definition, yes, we are in one. But. If you go in your city, almost anywhere, go look at the restaurants. Guess what? There's still people eating out. Now, again, I know I live in kind of a bubble place in Frisco, Plano, McKinney, Allen, Texas. It's pretty affluent here. But I mean, not, it's not like everybody's just rolling in cash. I can go out any night of the week. And all the restaurants are busy. They may not be full to capacity, but they're busy. There's people eating out. And I, I swear to God, every time my wife and I go eat out, it's at least like 50 bucks now. We used to be able to go out and eat. It'd be like $30. And now it's $50. And that's way more expensive than buying food at the grocery store and cooking it. You can't tell me that people are struggling that much if they're still willing to go do that, go to the mall. We were in the mall this past weekend, wifey shopping for shoes or something. There were a lot of people there and a lot of people have bags in their hands. And again, I'm not talking about a whole bunch of boozy shit like, you know, Academy Sporting Goods and, and, and Dillard's and JCPenney. Like people just buy things. The NFL season just started. And outside of a few teams that suck, and nobody wants to go watch them anyway. The highlights that I saw were full stadiums of people. Now think about this. 60, 80, 100,000 people in an NFL stadium. All paying for tickets, paying for parking, buying a... $20 beer and a $30 burger. People have money for what they want to have money for. And they will spend it when they believe that the value that they're going to receive is greater than the money they they are going to hand over. So for you, your program's $500, $1,000, whatever it is. 
If somebody goes, you know what? If I give you $500, I believe that I'm going to get more than $500 of value back. Then they will buy your program. They will sign up with you. They will hire you to coach them. Is the market shrinking? Is the client market shrinking? No, it's not. We just have to be willing to be bold and continue to put our message out there and not be scared of what the news is telling you or what the Facebook feed is telling you or what your your uncle is telling you or you know people that are uneducated are telling you. Don't listen to those people. If you want to help people, go help them. And I'm telling you, you can help more people when you got money in your pocket than when you don't. Is the recession real? Eh, I don't know. I don't really care because my mission is solid and I hope yours is too. And if it's not, maybe you need to question that a little bit. Maybe you need to have a good talk with that person in the mirror and figure out what it is that you really want and the impact that you want to make. People need our help. People want to look and feel better. People want to walk with more confidence. People want to feel good when they put a shirt on. People want to be able to take their shirt off and feel good. People want to get off medication. The average diabetic spends $500 to $1,000 a month on medication. Can you convey that message to someone and let them see that, hey, you put in a little bit of time and effort and energy and you don't have to pay that anymore. Some of y'all are so caught up in the money aspect of this instead of the helping people aspect of this. Fuck a recession. Go help some people. That's what this is all about. Because most of you, you stick around in this industry long enough, you're in it because you're passionate about it. I wouldn't be doing this for 20 years if I didn't love it. I got a text yesterday from one of my clients saying, hey, man, I'm so grateful I moved close to your gym. I always thought you were a pretty good dude, but man, it's so great to be in there with all those people and, and see you in action. And I'm so grateful. Like that lit me up. That made my fucking day. And all I did was just help that guy. That's all I'm doing is serving him. What do you want out of this? You can grow a business at any time, any place, any type of economy. It doesn't matter. If you are confident in what you're doing and you're sharing that message with others, people will respond in kind. I promise you. I've been through enough years of this to know the drill. Stop watching the news. Stop listening to people that don't know. Stop listening to people that don't believe in you and go out and get what you're worth. Y'all have a good day.